Hello there everybody, it's Wayne Robson here again. My oh my, it has been a while hasn't it? Well, I'm afraid I got caught up in the festive season and one thing and another. Uh, so I thought we'd wait a little while, we got into 2009 to actually cover some more stuff for uh, Mudbox 2009. Now in this case, um, to go with the one that I've already put out, uh, showing you how to get displacement maps into XSI, I thought we'd cover 3D Max. Because 3 Max 2009 uh, does have one thing that will trip you up. Um, I'm not sure if this is a bug or not, but I'll show you a way around it. Now I've got the uh, model that I was messing around with um, a few nights ago. It's going to be used by NVIDIA for some tech demos and stuff. Now I'll show you the shades I've got set up here. My first one is uh, just a simple standard shader. Okay, put a bit of specular on that. Um, as you can see there, that's applied. Now this is where a lot of guys would do 32-bit uh, displacement. You'd first of all unlock that there, all right? You go here, it would then let you browse for the 3D displacement uh, node, okay? Which you see there, okay? You then open there, stick your map in, stick your blur down to zero and put the filtering on to zero there. Normally, in, uh, I'll just show you at the moment what I have done. Um, is I've turned displacement off for the moment. Just so you can see, that's it without displacement. Okay, very boring, etc, etc. Now I've got this model, uh, it's already converted to a poly, so I'll just quickly drop that down, let's put TU in for Turbo Smooth, and we'll put that down there. We'll even put a couple of iterations on. In fact, I've selected the wrong model. Oh, naughty, naughty win. See, this thing does sort of happen, you know. I've already got it on there, we'll stick it on a two. There you go. Um, so there you go, that is, there it is, smoothed out and looking all very nice and it renders quite fast. Now if I stick displacement on, down under my render settings, I'll just close down some of this stuff, under shadows and displacement, change it to 64, I'll stick for the moment, uh, just for the case of speed, I'll keep the edge length to 1. Now the lower you get that, to, if you took it down to 0 0.01, the render would be absolutely phenomenal and exactly the same as you see in Mudbox, but that comes at a price, and the price is time. So if we do it on this one, uh, I always take smooth enough, and we'll leave that there. I'll quickly pause this. Okie dokie, here we are again. Um, now I've actually just, in the centre of this video, found a solution uh, to a problem. If you had run this out with Turbo Smooth with just one iteration, it would explode into spikes. Thousands and thousands of big long spikes on the standard shader. Now, what I was going to show you was that if you apply an arch and design shader and put your displacement straight under that, it solves the issue. But um, the easy way now for this workaround stick to spend an iteration on Tablesmith. So there you go. Uh, there's a tip live. I and mean, if you're noticing the arms on this one are different they ended up. That's just because this was a displacement map that I used to reconstruct the entire model. Uh, I'd rip the arms off and put them in a separate file. We'll cover that at some later point. Um, so there you go. Uh, that's the live way of doing it. So we um, came up with it live. Now that's um, taken uh, about a minute and a half, two minutes to render out. So that's how you set it up in 3D Max. You notice the best thing, to be quite blunt, is that I do not have to do all this stuff under here and go minus 0 0.5 like you would with other applications. You don't have to do that at all. Straight out of the box. Um, if you want to use a normal map, um, you can use uh, the CGFX shaders. I'll show you how to do some of that in a separate video. Okay, so there you are. This one ended a little bit differently than I thought it did. Bye bye.